Hello friends, myself Uddesh and today we are discussing about theory of computation. In this we will discuss about machines and their tuple representation. Let's start. Start with the machines. Today we will cover first DFA that is the deterministic finite automata. Second NFA non-deterministic finite automata. Epsilon NFA, NFA with epsilon transition. Moore machine, Millet machine and the Turing machine. We will discuss tuple representation of all these machines. Let's start with the first one, tuple representation. Here it is the first tuple representation. It is the five tuple representation including Q, summation, del, Q0 and F. Q is the finite set of states. Summation is the finite set of input symbols. Del is the transition function or we may call it as a mapping function. Q0 is the initial state. F is the final state. So whose tuple representation is this? Here the examples are DFA, NFA and Epsilon NFA. The tuple representation for all these three is same. It is the five tuple representation and namely Q summation del Q0 and F. Then there are slight uh, identification points in between among these threes. Let's discuss about that. Identification points. First, DFA. A finite automata which leads to only one state on a single unique input. Means if you apply a single input on a state which is the unique one, then it will leads you to a unique state. Only a single unique state rather than leading to multiple states. The second one is the NFA. A finite automata which leads to one or more than one state on a single unique input. The very contrary to DFA, if we apply a single unique input to a state, in NFA, NFA will leads to one or more than one states. Means Assume one example that you are in the state A and applying an input 1. Then NFA will lead you to different state like the state B as well as to state C2. While DFA leads to only a single state. The next one is Epsilon NFA. It is the NFA with the Epsilon transition. The NFA which takes Epsilon as an input to reach to the next state. Here, we are including the epsilon transition to reach to the next state in the NFA, then it will become the epsilon NFA. Let's first discuss diagrammatically the difference between all these three, how one can identify among these three. Here, we have a finite automata. Let's discuss about that. We have the four states Q0, Q1, Q2 and Q3. Each states there are two rays going from every state. Consider from starting Q0 on input 1, we reach to Q1 on input 0, we reach to Q3. Similarly, for Q1 on input 1, we reach to Q2 and on input 0, we reach to Q3. Similarly, Q2 on input 1, we remain in the same state on 0, we will go to the state Q3 and for the state Q3, Though we apply 0 or 1, we will reside in the same states. Means here if we think about all these states and the inputs, then we will come to know that the every state has only two inputs and the two outputs except the starting states. It has the only outputs in the shown in the diagram. Means the every state gives the transition for two inputs either 0 or 1. If we check or if we tally this uh, finite automata with our identification rules, then we will come to know that it is nothing but the DFA, that is the deterministic finite automata. Let's change something. If we add a new state Q4 to this existing finite automata, and we will reach to the state Q4 from Q0 on application of input 1, then Look at this diagram. 
look at this finite automata what it is on state suppose we are in the starting state q0 and apply the input to 1 then the finite automata will lead us to state q1 as well as to state q42 this is nothing but the nfa which leads to one or more than one states on a single unique input now if we change something or add something as like this if we add epsilon transition from q q4 to q3 then it will become the epsilon nfa means the nfa with epsilon transition let's see the next tuple representation it is the six tuple representation q0 summation del q0 and lambda and delta if we think of the previous tuple representation then we will come to know that the in the previous tuple representation the first four quantities or the first four members of this tuple family are constant except the last one that is the final and replacing that final one here we have capital delta and lambda let's see what they are first q is the finite set of states summation is the finite set of input symbols del is the transition function or the mapping function q0 is the initial state and now delta delta is the finite set of output symbols means this machine definitely will give us the output of something the set of all this, those output symbols is nothing but delta and now lambda lambda is the output function or the mapping function which helps one to map to the output for the examples of these uh, this tuple six tuple representation is nothing but of the Moore machine and the Millet machine which provides us the output on application of input we will get the desired output assume one example that if uh, you have the binary string of 0 1 0 1 and you want a string with all ones in the output then it will be done using the these machines Moore machine and Millet machine let's discuss each of them in detail first started with Moore machine here it is the finite automata of the Moore machine where you will come to know that there are four states with the name of the states as ABC and all these let's summarize it as yeah Moore machine in this output is within the state means uh, here a slash x2 b slash x1 c slash x2 and d slash x3 in these a b c d are nothing but the name of the states and x1 x2 and x3 are the output symbols here output depends on state only yeah definitely as the output resides in the state it will definitely depend on the state here q q is the set of input symbols sorry q is the set of all the states here we have the four states a b c d summation is the input set of input symbols 0 and 1 delta is the transition function q into summation gives q means if we apply an input on any state then we will get a state as an output consider for the first state a on the state a if we apply input 0 then we will get the state b similar way on the state a if we apply 1 we will get the output state as a c here q0 is the initial state and it is the initial state a delta is the set of output symbols and here we have the output symbols as x1 x2 and x3 lambda is the output function which maps us to the output here it is the q gives lambda delta means every state will gives us the output it is definitely the output resides in the state means the state will give you the output likewise if you are on the state B it will give output x1 as output A for on the state A it will give x2 as output and likewise so this is the Moore machine if you see the this type of representation in any machine then don't confuse that it is the Moore machine the next one is the Millet machine here it is the finite automata of the diagram of the Millet machine here you can see the two states and the transitions 
over the states with uh, 0 slash 0, 1 slash 1, 0 slash 1, 1 slash 0. Let's discuss that. Here in the Miller machine, output is not within the state. Yeah, definitely in the Moore, um, in the Moore machine, you can see the output within the state while in the Miller machine, output is not in the state. Output depends on the present state and the input. Here, the set of state is A and B. There are only two states, A and B. Summation is the input symbol 0 and 1. Transition function is the delta Q into summation gives Q. Means, on application of any input on a state, any state will lead to a different state. Here, starting, symbol, starting state is A. Delta is the output variables. We have the output 0 and 1 and the lambda. Lambda is the Q into summation gives del. Here we have both del and lambda at same. Means on application of any input on state we will get output as well as the state. Let's discuss according to the diagram. Here we are, we are on the state A and apply input 0 then we will get the A state as an output and the 0 as an output means consider the next example if we are on the state A and we apply input as 1 then it will lead us to the state B with an output 1 similarly for the B if you are on the B state and apply 0 it will lead us to the state B with the output 1 similarly likewise these are the del and lambda functions and if you see this type of arrangement in your finite automata, then it will be definitely melee machine. Now let's discuss to the final machine that is the Turing machine. Here it is the seven tuple representation namely Q summation del Q naught F B and tau. If we compare this Turing machine with the previous one Moore machine and melee machine tuple representation, then we will come to know that the in the Turing machine, the one element is more than the Moore machine and the Millet machine tuple representation. And if you compare the Turing machine with the finite automata NFA and DFA with phi tuple representation, then we come to know that there are two fields extra in this Turing machine. We are familiar with the Q summation del Q naught and F, and the new uh, new symbols are B and tau capital B and tau. Let's see what are they. Here it is the representation of Turing machine. Q is the finite set of states. Here we have the state as A, B, C and H. By mistake there is one remain that is the H. Then the summation is the finite set of input symbols 0 and 1. As seen in the diagram we have the input as 0 or 1, 0 or 1. So it is the set of input state as 0 and 1. Delta is the transition function or mapping function. It will map Q into tau to Q into tau into tau to L R N. What is the tau and what are L R N? Let's discuss that further. Q naught is the initial state that is the A. F is the final state H. B is the blank symbol huh, here new symbol is the blank symbol tau tau is the set finite set of tape symbols what are the tape symbols it is the 0 1 and blank symbol means the tau is nothing but the tape symbols input symbols including with blank here it is the representation of tape starting and ending in blank symbol and in between we have the definite symbols and string here it is the pointer it is used to move left or right as uh, explained in the transition function del q into tau to q into tau into lrn lrn nothing but the direction Matlab means left right and no moment so this is what the representation of turing machine Let's discuss uh, according to the diagram. First, uh, we are 
uh, assume that we are on the state A and apply input as 0 then we will get P as an output and we will have to move our pointer to the right side of our tape and on the input application of input 1 on the state A we will get the same P as output and we have to move our pointer to the left side of our tape. So this is nothing but the representation of Turing machine with 7 tuple representation Q summation del Q naught F B and tau. So guys today we revise all the machines and their tuple representation with 5 tuple representation DFA, NFA, Epsilon NFA, 6 tuple representation Moore machine and Millet machine while the 7 tuple representation it is the Turing machine. So guys thanks for watching this video if you like it then don't forget to hit the button like and do subscribe the video.